हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल आई नीड योर सपोर्ट नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम 1241 एंड दिस प्रॉब्लम इट इज सेड दैट द एलिवेटर स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम रेस्ट एट द फर्स्ट फ्लोर ऑफ द बिल्डिंग राइट सो दिस इज द एलिवेटर इट स्टार्ट फ्राम द फर्स्ट फ्लोर ऑफ दिस बिल्डिंग एंड इट सेज दैट इट कैन एक्सेलरेट एट फाइव फीट पर सेकेंड स्क्वेयर एंड देन डी एक्सेलरेट एट टू फीट पर सेकेंड स्क्वेयर and we are asked to determine the shortest time it takes to reach a floor 40 feet above the ground right so this elevator will reach to this point right so 40 feet distance it will travel a distance of 40 feet distance right and it is said that the elevator starts from rest and then stops right so the initial and final velocity is are zero right so let's say that for a distance of this height h right the this elevator is accelerating right and the acceleration rate is 5 feet per second square so let's say that this is our initial origin position right and in this direction the uh, position traveled or the displacement is positive in this direction right so let's say that initially this the position s is equal to 0 at this particular point right and let's say at this particular point s is equal to h and let's say that from 0 to h uh, this elevator takes time equal to t1 let's say right and then the velocity at this particular point let's say that s is equal to h let's say that at this particular point the velocity is v1 let's say right and the acceleration from 0 to t1 right so this takes the elevator takes uh, t1 time to travel this height to travel this h distance right and the acceleration during this time interval is how much so the acceleration during this time interval is 5 feet per second so let's say if we write the data let's say that the time is greater than 0 and it is less than t1 and the s is less than h and greater than 0 right so we are considering this condition for uh, this part of the journey from 0 to h right and for this part of the journey the acceleration given is constant which is 5 feet per second square this is given right so we can write that dv by dt is equal to 5 feet or we can write that dv is equal to 5 dt right and we will integrate this to find the velocity function right so we are asked to determine the shortest time it takes to reach a floor and then we are asked to draw the at vt and st graph so to draw the at vt and st graph so we have to find the velocity and position functions right as a function of time right so for v1 let's say that it is from 0 to v the initial velocity is 0 right and the time is from 0 to t right so when we integrate this so this will be v minus 0 and this will be 5t and from 0 to t so this will be 5t right so let's say that this is the velocity function for the first part of the journey when it is accelerating with 5 feet per second square right and that is from 0 to h distance right for this particular height and now let's say the velocity at this particular point let's say if time traveled at at t equals to t1 the velocity will be equal to from this equation the velocity will be 5 t1 and let's say that at that particular point the velocity is v1 right so when this elevator is at a distance of h from this origin the velocity v1 is 5 t1 right and the acceleration is the acceleration during this time interval is how much that is the 5 feet per second square right and now if we want to if we want to find the s of t function so then v is ds by dt so we can write that ds is 5 t dt and we will integrate this right and let's say that this is from 0 to s and let's say that this is from 0 to t so this will be when we integrate this so then this will be s minus 0 and this will be 5 t square divided by 2 and this will be from 0 to t 
So, this means this is s and this is 5 divided by 2. So, 5 divided by 2 will be 2.5. So, we can write that this is 2.5 t square and if we apply these conditions, so then this will be 2.5 t square, right. So, this is the s of t function for these conditions, right. And if we want to find the position after the time t equals to 1, so then when t equals to t 1, so then we will put t equals to t 1 in this equation, so then we will get that position, right. So, we can write that that s and when time t equals to t 1, s the position is equal to h remember, right. So, then we can write that h is equal to 2.5 t 1 square when we put these both of these values in this equation, right. And now, we have one another equation, let us say if we apply this condition v d v is equal to a d s and when we integrate this, let us say, so if this is from 0 to v and this is from 0 to s, right. So, this will be v square divided by 2 from 0 to v and this will be a s and from 0 to s, right. So, when we put these boundary conditions and then this will be v square divided by 2 and this acceleration is constant, remember. So, this is a c and this acceleration is how much? So, this acceleration is 5, right. So, we know this acceleration value for this part of the journey. So, this is 5, so, this is 5 s. So, when we put these boundary conditions and then this will be 5 s and we can write that v square is equal to 10 s. Right. So, this is the velocity function in terms of s, this is v s function, right. And when s is equal to h, velocity is equal to v 1, right, for this part of the journey, right. So, when s is equal to h, v is equal to v 1. So, we can put that in, in this equation. So, this means that v 1 square is equal to 10 h, right. So, now we have this one another relation. Let us say this is equation 1, let us say this is equation 2 and this is another relation, this is equation 3 and this is equation 4, let us say, right. So, now if we apply v and from time t equals to greater than t 1 and less than t, let us say, after this uh, interval, right. So, let us say that then the it is said that the elevator is de accelerating, right. So, it then de accelerate at 2 feet per second. So, for this time interval, for time greater than t 1 and less than t, the acceleration, the constant acceleration is minus 2 feet per second square, it is de accelerating. So, we can write that dv is equal to minus 2 dt, this is dv by dt, right. So, if I integrate this, so then the initial velocity. Okay, first uh, let me apply that equation. Let me apply this v d v equals to a c d s, right? And the initial velocity will now be v one, right? So we have to integrate this from v one to v, and this is from h to s, right? So this h. So now the journey is from this point until the until it reaches this point until it reaches 40 right so this will be from h to s so when we integrate this so then this will be v square divided by 2 and this will be from v1 to v and this ac we know this ac so this ac is minus 2 right so we can write this as minus 2 this will be minus 2 s and this will be from h until s so if we put the values in boundary values in these in this equation. So, then this will be v square divided v square minus v 1 square and I have took this one by 2 common and this is minus 2 s minus h or if, if I multiply this 2. So, then this will be v square minus v 1 square and this will be minus 4 s minus h. Right. So, now if we put v 1 in terms of h in this equation, right. So, this is v 1 square. So, v 1 square is equal to 10 h, right. So, I can write that, let me write this as v, v square is equal to v 1 square minus 4 s minus h, right. So, now when s is equal to 40, 
the velocity is equal to 0 this is given right it is given that the elevator starts from rest and then stops right so the final velocity is 0 right and when it travels a vertical distance of 40 feet so when s is 40 feet velocity is 0 right so the final velocity is again 0 so if we put both of these values in this equation right so then this will be 0 square so 0 square is 0 and this v1 and let's say if we put this v1 in terms of h right so v1 square is 10 h so if i put this is 10 h minus 40 and then s is 40 minus h so now we have only one unknown in this equation so this will give us the h value so now if I simplify this so then we can find the h value from this so then this is 10 h minus this is 160 and this is minus 4 h and this is equal to 0 right or we can write it 0 on this side as well right so this will be 10 h minus 4 h so then this is 6 h this will be my this is plus 4 right so this is 14 h remember so this is 14 h is equal to 160 so h is equal to 160 divided by 14 so let me find this so this h comes out to be 11.429 feet right so this is that h and now we can find this v1 velocity right so this v1 if i put v1 square will be equal to 10 into h this h so this is 11.429 and if we take under the root so then we will get that v1 velocity that velocity which this elevator attains after traveling this h distance and this h is 11.429 feet so now this v1 is equal to 10.69 feet per second now if you want to find that time interval during which uh, the elevator traveled from 0 to this height this 11.429 so we can use this equation we can use this equation this third equation right so if if we write that h is equal to 2.5 t1 square so then h is now 11.429 which is equal to 2.5 t1 square so then t1 is equal to 11.429 divided by 2.5 and we will take square root so this will give us the time interval time that is t1 so this comes out to be 2.138 second so now this means that when the, ex the elevator was accelerating with 5 feet per second square it took uh, 2.138 second to travel 11.429 feet distance these are the results right so these are very important results now we can write the condition for the second part of the journey right so now we can write that when t is greater than t1 which is 2.138 seconds until 40 uh, until t we do not know this t yet right so when the time is greater than 2.138 so the elevator is traveling from h that is 11.429 until 40 feet right so now we can write that the acceleration is constant which is minus 2 feet per second square that is given so now we can find the velocity function in terms of time right so the velocity function we can write that dv will be equal to minus 2 dt and now when we can integrate this so this will be from v1 to v and this will be from t1 to t so now this will be v minus v1 and now we know v1 v1 is 10.69 right so this will be v minus 10.69 and this will be minus 2 and t1 is 2.138 so we can write this is 2.138 to t this will be v minus 10.69 minus 2t and this will be minus into minus so this will become plus 2 into 2.138 so this will be v equals to minus 2t and when we simplify this so when this comes to the other side so this will become plus 10.69 so then let me simplify this so then this will be the velocity function and velocity function is a time right so this is minus 2t plus 
14.97 right so this is the velocity equation for the second part of the journey when the elevator is g accelerating right so this is very important again right and now to find the position function we can use this equation right so we can find the s of t function right so then this means that velocity this is the velocity function so ds by dt is equal to this thing or we can write that ds by dt is equal to minus 2t plus 14.97 into dt so we have to integrate this so then this will be from h until s right so the h is how much so that is the 11.429 so 11.429 to s and this will be from t1 which is 2.138 until t so this will be when we integrate this so then this will be s minus 11.429 and this will be when we integrate this so then this will be minus 2t square divided by 2 minus 2t square divided by 2 plus 14.970 t and this is from 2.138 to t so now if we put all those boundary conditions so then this will be s and this will be minus 11.429 and this is this will become minus t square plus 14.970 t and then we will subtract those values we if we put these boundary conditions and then this will be minus 2.138 squared and this will be plus 14.97 into this 2.138 right so if we simplify this and then this will be s is will be equal to minus t square plus 14.97 t and i have to simplify this and i have to bring this to the other side of the equation so let me simplify this so now when we simplify this so this is s of t function for the second part of the journey right so now let us let me write the uh, conclusion right so when t is greater than 0 and less than 2.138 seconds right so then s is greater than 0 and less than 11.429 these are the uh, final conclusions right so for this duration the velocity function is 5 into t and this is the s function right so s is 2.5 t square right and the acceleration is 5 feet per second square right and now when t is greater than 2.138 second and when it is less than t and when s is greater than 11.429 and less than 40 these are the uh, conditions right so we have the velocity function which is equal to minus 2 t plus 14.97 right so this is 14.97 and s of t is minus t square plus 14.97 t minus 16 right so these are the velocity and position functions and the acceleration during this time interval is minus 2 feet per second square so now let let me plot uh, all the graphs that are required so now if this is our a t plot this is let's say a per second square and this is t so when the time is from 0 to let's say 2.138 let's say that this is one second this is two let's say somewhere is 2.138 second so the acceleration is five feet right so we can write that let's say somewhere here is five and then it de accelerate right and the de acceleration rate is minus 2 right so let's say somewhere here is minus 2 right if i extend this so then this graph will fall and then it will be linear right and this particular point the time is how much so this is 2.138 second and let me find the final time t value when it reaches the height of 40 feet 
So when it reaches a height of 40 feet, so the velocity is 0. So if we put v equals to 0 in this equation, so then we will get the total time, right? So let me put t equals to 0 in this equation, right? So let us say this is minus 2t plus 14.97 equals to 0. So this will be t equals to minus 14.97 divided by minus 2. So this comes out to be 7.485 or we can write 7.49 seconds, right? So this means that this time interval is 7.49 seconds. Right, so this means that the elevator has traveled 40 feet distance in a total time of 7.49 seconds. So this is A versus T plot. Right, so now to plot the velocity versus time. So this will be velocity, this is feet per second and this is time in second. Right, so initially this is the velocity function which is 5t. So initially the velocity is 0 and when time t equals to 2.138 so let's say somewhere here is 2.138 so the velocity is how much so uh, we have found that velocity which is 10.69 right so this is v1 right so v1 is 10.69 so let's say somewhere here is 10.69 10.69 feet per second and as we can see that the velocity function is a straight line it is a linear right so it is 5t so then what we have to do is that we have to join this point with this point, right? And then after uh, this time, t equals to 7.49, right? So let's say that this is somewhere here is 7.49, let's say. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's say somewhere here is 7. So 7.49 will be somewhere here, right? So after this much time, 7.49 the velocity is 0 right and again as we can see that the velocity will be 0 so and as we can see that this is a straight line equation and the slope is negative right so this means that we will have to join this point with this point and then the slope of this equation is negative right so what is meant by the negative slope so then this angle when the angle a with the horizontal is clockwise so then this is the negative slope right so this is negative slope so this is v of t curve right and now if we plot the s of t curve right so let me plot the s of t so now let's say again that somewhere here is 2.138 second this is t in second and this is s in feet Right, so when the time is 2.138 seconds, so the height, the distance traveled is 11.429, which we know this is 11.429, right? So let's say that again somewhere here is 11.429, right? And as we can see that initially this is a second degree curve, right? It is 2.5 t square. So this means that we have to draw a free hands curve, right? So this will be, we can write that this is S equals to 2.5 T square, right? And now as we can see that initially the velocity was increasing and then it is decreasing, right? So the slope is negative, right? So this means that after 2.138, the slope of the s of t curve will decrease so initially the slope is increasing right so initially this is the slope which is increasing so this slope is increasing so initially this is the slope right so this slope is increasing and after this point the slope will decrease right and let's say that this is 3 4 5 6 7 so let's say somewhere here is 7.49 second so and at 7.49 second the distance traveled is 40 so let's say this is 10, 20, 30. So let's say somewhere here is 40, let's say. So let's say somewhere here is 40 feet and this is S. So this means that the slope will decrease. So the, again, the, well, uh, the S of T function is again second degree curve and its slope is negative. So we will join these two points by a free hand, but now the curve will be like this. Right, so the slope will decrease from this point. So initially the slope is like this and then the slope decreases.
right so the slope decreases so now if we can write that until this point this is the s of t function and from this 2.138 to 7.49 the s of t function is minus t square plus 14.970 t minus 16 right so this is the solution of this particular problem